It's been over 50 years since Fiat first introduced the original Nuevo 500. In the late 1950s, it was a city car that brought accessible driving to the masses, romance to small cars and chic to cheap. It was little, clever, groundbreaking and thoughtful. It was packed with Italian style, practicality, but it still had flair. And yes, it sold by the bucket load. Then there was the new one, which did pretty much the same thing in 2007. All in all, it's been a bit of a phenomenon, and British towns are full of them. It lasted 13 years, almost unchanged, and sold more than 2 million. That is a big success in the world of cars. And now there's a new, new one, and it has one hell of an electrifying twist. But before I tell you all about it, please don't forget to do all the usual things, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, turn those notifications on because life will be slightly better if you do. And back to this, the new New 500. Now this car is very different from those around the corner from you, because in true forward thinking Fiat 500 fashion, this car is powered by electrons. That's right, the all new 500 only comes as a pure electric car. And I think that's a very good thing. Why? Well, because the 500 has always been a city car and small electric cars love the city like a squirrel loves nuts. Not that you'll be confined to the city with this car because the model with the biggest 42 kilowatt hour battery can manage 199 miles on a charge. Look, I know that's not a game changer when you compare it to slightly bigger cars like the Peugeot E208 or the Vauxhall Corsa E but it's a good chunk more than the funky, fashionable little things like the Honda E or the Mini Electric, which incidentally, it also undercuts on price. Now Fiat says the electric 500 has, and I quote, the longest range of any city car on sale today, which is quite a bold claim, isn't it? Given that any car that you drive into the city is technically a city car, but I guess I do know where they're going with this because the 500, like the Honda E or the Mini Electric, and unlike the 208 or the Corsa, is more fashion statement slash desirable object than simply a means of transportation. When I picked the car up this morning, I found myself giving it a hug, really did. And as I was driving here today, I was also pondering what name she should have. She's just that kind of car. The entire interior has been redesigned and it really shows. It's clean, it's clear, and dare I say it, really quite elegant. At its centre is the infotainment system, a 10-inch touchscreen system that delivers all the features that you expect in 2021. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included, as is TomTom Tom Nav USB connectivity, and lovely extras like the 360-degree parking sensors. And there's a whole host of driver assistance tech which helps to put the 500 onto level two of the self-driving scale. This car may have some retro influences, but it feels pretty set for the future to me. Now, this being an Italian car, we don't get very far without romance being involved. And apparently, all of the interior has been redesigned with romance in mind. All these curves, all these nice shapes, it's supposed to resemble a romantic bench. I'm really not quite sure where to go with that. I'm not entirely sure I feel very romantic sitting here. It is, however, just a really nice place to be, not least because of the fact that there are some really interesting materials in here. So the mats down there are made from recycled fabrics and the seats are recycled too. They're made from something called sequel, which is a vegan material produced by using up waste plastics from the sea. How cool is that? Also very cool is the fact that the chrome isn't chrome. It's actually paint because chroming isn't the most environmentally friendly thing to do. Lots of really nice touches and the 500 proves that it isn't only Tesla that can come up with Easter eggs. There's a couple in here that I really like. Just there on that handy little place to charge your phone is the skyline of Turin where this car is built. And if you look just in here, you've got Made in Torino, 
with a little outline of the car. Some really, really nice touches in here go together to make this a very lovely place to be. There's also some quite cool stuff going on with the interior storage, like the central cubby between the seats that gives way to clear through space between the upright dash, which is pretty cool. But I think the coolest thing about the 500 is that along with the hard top, you can have it as a semi-convertible like this. I mean, is there anything quite as joyful as an electric car that is a convertible? You can smell the smells as you're driving along, you can feel the sunshine on your face, the wind in your hair, and you're not bothered by an annoying, pesky, loud engine. It is absolutely brilliant. And the other great thing about it is that it gives you a fighting chance of hearing something really quite special. There's this whole thing, isn't there, that pedestrians can't hear electric cars coming. And car makers have had to come up with all kinds of bings and bongs and sounds to alert them to the fact that there's one close by. Well, Fiat have just played the ultimate top trump card when it comes to that. The 500 doesn't make a noise to alert passengers. Ugh, no. It plays a few bars of a piece of music composed by Nino Rotto who also composed the music for the Godfather movies. I mean, how Italian is that? How brilliant! It makes me so happy. And it's that kind of attention to detail about this car that I absolutely love. Another thing that makes me happy is that you get three driving modes to choose from, and they are normal, range, and Sherpa. Yeah, Sherpa, it's a nice touch to call it something interesting rather than just eco. And it helps you, as the name suggests, get the most mileage out of your charge. So let's start with normal, which does exactly as it says on the tin. You get full performance, so a rather useful 118 brake horsepower, not to 62, is 9 seconds, which is about the same as a petrol 1.4 litre. Right then, roof up now, I think. Sadly, we're not in lovely Italy. We're in England in the middle of winter, whilst it's a lot of fun. I do think I want to be warm. Moving on, let's kick on to range mode. Now, let me just toggle down here. There we are, range mode. Now, what this does is introduces something called regenerative braking. And what that means is that the car harvests the energy that is usually lost when you slow down, and it puts it back into the car's battery. And it means that you can get one pedal driving. So literally the accelerator is push on it, and there you go, you get that lovely spurt of energy that you get with an electric car, pull off it, and straight away the car's starting to slow down. Um, I've not needed to touch the brake pedal at all there, the accelerator is doing uh, both jobs. It's something that I absolutely love. I know not everybody is as keen on it as I am, but it does mean that you don't actually need to use the brake pedal at all when you're driving. Well, most of the time anyway, which I think is a really smart thing to do. It makes you anticipate what's coming up on the road ahead of you more as well. That, my friends, is going to give you the largest range possible. Fiat reckons that you might even see up to 285 miles during city driving, which is really impressive. And then, of course, there is the funny sounding one. So let's have another little fiddle along here. And we're in Sherpa mode. I do like that name, actually. I think it's quite cute. I think you should think of this as essentially your saviour mode. So if you do start to run low on range, what it will do is play around with all the various systems and the brake regeneration to just reduce the energy consumption. It will help you get to the destination in your sat-nav or to the nearest charging station. Look, it's not going to work miracles. Don't expect too much of it, but it could well get you out of a tight spot without you having to stress too much. What Fiat is doing is really addressing the needs of an electric car driver. Instead of just copying the things that we had with traditionally engined cars, you see sport mode comes as standard with electric. They all feel pretty nippy, but managing charge and range is actually, when you think about it, much more important. And I love the idea that Fiat have really given some thought to this. So. Let's talk charging, and it's actually pretty good news. Now, the lower spec cars get a slower 
50 kilowatt onboard charger, whilst the higher spec like this one get an 85 kilowatt onboard charger. And what that means basically is that you can plug in and add around 30 miles of charge onto this car at one of the fast public chargers. And you can top up from 20 to 80% in just over half an hour. Now those figures are only, as I said, if you find one of the more powerful, faster chargers. If you find one of the standard 50 kilowatt ones, which are far more common, then that figure is going to leap up to around an hour. This larger battery car will take around six hours to charge on a home charging unit. And the smaller battery, that's going to drop to around three hours. As for all the other stuff, well, the 500 is pretty much as you might expect. It's easy, not to mention loads of fun to drive. Everything feels very intuitive. It's easy to judge, you know, from the pedal responses to the steering, which incidentally is fantastic. It's very light, very easy to control, and it has one hell of a turning circle, 9.6 meters to be precise. I mean, it's virtually at Honda E levels of U-turn cheekiness. It would put a London taxi to shame. And what that really means is that it's very easy to navigate around awkward roads or car parks. You can squeeze into those difficult little spots with ease. I'm very conscious that I'm driving around in this cheeky little Italian car with a big smile on my face telling you all how wonderful it is. And there do have to be a few downsides, don't there? I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't find a few. So what does let the whole thing down slightly is the ride comfort. Look, it's not terrible, but this car has those absolutely gorgeous 17 inch alloy wheels, which means that it is a little, let's just say bumpy on certain roads. I think smaller wheels would definitely make a difference and we will report back on that when we get a chance to drive a car with the smaller wheels on it. But thankfully, that's really about it. One thing I'm really noticing here as I scooch back in my chair is the headrest and the seat. It looks like it's got memory foam in it, so comfortable, which is not something that you could have said for the old new Fiat 500. The seats just weren't that great at all. But this um, seat is set lower, has a really good range of movement, both the wheel and the seat, and it's just, yeah, really comfortable. It's sort of a very nice little extra surprise, actually. I wasn't expecting that. So the driving and the tech is all bang up to date, but I haven't even mentioned the way it looks. And I think it looks great. It's contemporary, but it's cute. I love the grille, the 500 badging, these arrow-shaped indicators. I love the way the lights look as if they've got little eyelashes above them. Even the electric door handles are great, although you do wonder if that's one thing that might go wrong. So, what about the bad stuff? Well, it would be quite handy if your backseat passengers didn't have any legs, because space really isn't at an optimum in there. And as for the boot, well, it is basically just an extension of my handbag. It's very compact. But look what's in the boot. This is absolutely brilliant. This chic, stylish bag with two handles is actually home for the charging cables. That is fantastic. I haven't seen anyone, any car maker, give as much thought to what the cables go into as this. I just love the Italians for coming up with something as chic as this. In fact, it's nicer than my handbag. I'm gonna stick with this. On the way is a version with a smaller 23.8 kilowatt hour battery and a range of 115 miles, more like its contemporary city slickers than Mini Electric and Honda e. It is a bit slower, but in the lowest action spec, it costs just, wait for it, £19,995 here in the UK, which includes the government's plug-in car grant. Now that is really pretty good value. If you do want to go posh out, there's the Passion and Icon models, as well as this first edition La Prima. The top spec is the Icon convertible, and in the UK that's £27,645. You know, I've always really liked the new Fiat 500, but I've never been excited by it in the way I am the original car until now because I think Fiat have completely nailed it with this car. They've taken something that is much loved and completely reinvented it for the world we live in today. 
Bravo, Fiat. Bravo. Thanks as always for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on so you'll know when our latest video has landed. Well, the boot on the Fiat 500 is definitely compact, but it does kind of fit a Jimmy in it. I, I just don't know how I'm going to finish this film because I don't think I can get out. <laughs> Mitch, you are going to have to help me. <laughs> <laughs>